Hello, my name is Tomasz Diaszek, and in this video I will talk about solutions to National Coding Week challenge powered by Codility. In this challenge we are giving a string consisting of letters A and B, and we can modify it by performing any number of transformations uh, in which we replace uh, any occurrence of uh, a word ABB in the string by a word BAA. And we are asked what is the alphabetically largest string that can be obtained uh, using these transformations. Let's analyze one of the example test cases. The transformation that we can apply is changing an occurrence of ABB subword into subword BAA. In our example word, we have two occurrences of ABB, so if we want to apply some transformation, we can change which occurrence to replace. If we choose to replace the second one, we would get the following word, in which we can still replace the first one. After performing this transformation, we see that we can do another one, because uh, subword ABB appears one more time in the word. So finally we get a word in which ABB does not appear anymore, so we cannot make any further transformations. And it turns out that for this example, uh, this word is in fact uh, the alphabetically largest possible word that can be obtained by uh, performing some transformations, so we can uh, return it as an answer. But how can we be sure about this? The transformation we did were not in any particular order. Well, one observation is that each transformation increases the position of the word in alphabetical order uh, because uh, the first letter which is changed by this transformation is changed from A to B, so from smaller to the bigger letter in this order. That means that if we can make some transformation on the word, we should make some transformation. So if we have only one position in the word uh, in which we can apply the transformation, we should definitely apply it there. Uh, but the question is, what if we have multiple positions? Does the answer depend on the order in which we apply the transformations? Well, we can make some experiments on short words, and these experiments will show us that uh, no matter in which order we are performing the uh, operations, uh, every time we will get the same answer. And if it's true, we could make a very simple program which runs just uh, one loop. Uh, so while it finds uh, any occurrence of ABB um, in our string, it just replaces it with uh, with the BAA and then it returns uh, the final string. So this uh, program uh, passes the example test and this program uh, when tested by Codility will pass the correctness uh, tests. So this is a very um, good hint that uh, in fact this algorithm is correct. Unfortunately, it's not performing very well because in each loop we can uh, spend linear time on finding and replacing the string and we can have multiple iterations of this loop. For instance, for a test case in which we have one letter A followed by n minus one letters B, we will make a linear number of substitutions. But since each transformation decreases the number of letters B in the word, uh, we can make at most n such transformations. So the time complexity of the whole algorithm will be quadratic in terms of the length of the string. So we have two things to do now. We need to prove that this algorithm is in fact correct, and we need to improve its time complexity. So let's start with a proof of correctness. First, for every position in the word, starting from right to left, uh, we'll associate uh, a number. On the rightmost position, we put number 1, on the second position from the right, number 2, and on the subsequent positions, uh, we will put a number which is a sum 
of numbers on two preceding positions. So for the next position we'll put 3 because it's 1 plus 2. On the next one we put 5 because it's 2 plus 3. Then we will put 8 which is 3 plus 5. Then we'll put 13 and at the last position we'll put 21. So you probably guess that the numbers we put on the positions are the famous Fibonacci numbers and uh, these are defined by a recurrence formula. So the first Fibonacci number f1 is 1, the second is 2, and the next ones are defined as the sum of two preceding numbers. And we need these numbers to associate with each word a certain value. This value will be calculated as the sum of numbers on positions in which we have letters B in the word. So for instance, for the first word, we will sum 13 plus 8 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1, uh, which will give us sum of 29. Observe that if we do the same with the rest of the words in this example, we also get 29. For instance, for the last word, uh, we need to sum 21 and 8, which also gives us 29. And it's not a coincidence because this value was defined in such a way that no transformation changed it. Because as you can see, a transformation changes two letters B at positions I minus 1 and I minus 2 that add F I minus 1 plus F I minus 2 to the sum into one letter B on position I, which adds F i to the sum and uh, from the definition of Fibonacci numbers these numbers are the same. So no matter what transformation we'll do to our word and no matter in which order uh, the value associated with the word will always stay the same. So after all of these transformations we will get into some final position in which we cannot apply more transformations. And now we will show that for different final positions we have different final values. That means that from a starting word there is a unique final position that can be achieved. And since each sequence of transformations must achieve some final position, uh, that means it must achieve this unique final position that is the answer. So no matter what order of transformations we will use, we will always achieve the same final word. First, we'll assume that the initial letter in our starting word is the letter A. Because if it starts with some series of letters B, these letters will never be touched by any transformations. So we can just remove it from the word, transform a word which starts with A, and then we append this letter B to the answer. So if the initial word starts with A, then we show that the final word cannot have two consecutive letters B. Of course, it cannot have two consecutive letters B preceded by the letter A, because then we could do a transformation, but also it cannot have two consecutive letters B at the beginning of the word. That is because the biggest value for an n-letter word starting with A is obtained for a word in which every other letter is a letter B. And the value for this word is the sum of Fibonacci numbers on positions from 1 to n minus 1, which is equal to f n plus 1 minus 2. And this can be proved by a very simple induction. And since this is smaller than the uh, sum of numbers for the two leftmost positions, that means that we cannot have two b's on these positions. So we have proved that the final words have no consecutive letters b, and finally we'll prove that they have all unique values in range from 0 inclusive to fn plus 1 exclusive. We'll do it by induction. For n equal 1 we have two possible words a and b and they have values of 0 and 1 respectively, so from 0 to f2 exclusive. And for n equal to 2, we have three words of values 0, 1 and 2. A final word of length n can start with letter a, and then the rest of the 
n minus 1 letters will generate unique values in range from 0 to fn. And if its word starts with b, then the next letter must be letter a, and the remaining n minus 2 letters can generate any unique values from 0 to f n minus 1. But of course, for these values, we must add the value for this letter b, which is f n. So these words will generate all unique values from fn to fn plus fn minus 1, so fn plus 1. Summing these two disjoint ranges together, we will get the range from 0 to fn plus 1 exclusive, so the proof is done. So now when we know that every possible sequence of transformations will eventually lead us to the unique uh, final position, we need to devise an algorithm which effectively produces some sequence of transformations. And it turns out that we can make these transformations in one pass over the word from left to right. So we'll maintain a pointer that iterates over the word, and every time the pointer points to the beginning of the word ABB, we gradually apply the transformation and change it to BAA. Note that we created a new B in the initial position of the word, but that letter cannot be transformed anymore, so we can move the pointer to the next position. Since on the next position we don't have the word ABB, we move the pointer further, and then we apply the transformation once again. But now observe that the new letter B we have created can enable some transformation to the left of the pointer. So in order not to miss any possible transformations, we need to back up our pointer, but fortunately only two places to the left. Here we apply the transformation once again, which gives us the final word, so we will move the pointer to the rightmost uh, letter without performing any new transformations. So what is the time complexity of the algorithm? Every time when we cannot make a transformation, we move the pointer one position to the right. Every time when we can make a transformation, we move the pointer at most two positions to the left. But remember that we said that the total number of transformations we can make to the word is linear. So that means that we will move the pointer to the left at most two n positions. That means that to the right we will move the pointer at most by three n positions. Two n positions because we move the pointer to the left and additional n positions because we need to move the pointer from the beginning of the word to the end. So the total number of movements will be linear and since we can make a change in the word in constant time, this will be the total time complexity of the algorithm. So finally, let's go to the implementation of this algorithm. First, uh, we will convert uh, our string to the array of letters uh, because uh, strings in Python are immutable and we would like to update um, the array in constant time. And then the, we define our pointer and we'll make a loop with this pointer until we hit the end of the array. And if on the pointer we see a subword uh, which is uh, ABB, then we replace this part of the array with the subword BAI, and uh, we move the pointer uh, to the left at most by two positions. And else, if we couldn't find uh, uh, a correct uh, subword, then we'll just move the pointer to the right. At the end, we convert our array uh, to the string by joining all the letters. All right, let's see if this uh, solution compiles. It does, 
And in fact, this solution will get us the perfect score when tested by the Codelity servers.